I have to say good morning, brethren. Good morning. Good morning. And it's a beautiful one. <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. And just to remind us, today is Transfiguration Day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I was trying to come up with what to say, and I saw this, I said, well, what is more proper for a title mm -hmm. than the Transfiguration of Jesus Christ? And I realized that Matthew 17, 1 through 9, gives us a great insight as to what took place in transfiguration on the on the mountain so we are going up to the top of the mountain brethren and i want you to go with me now in this scripture it deals with the transfiguration of jesus christ and the time place and the awesome meaning of this transfiguration was truly inspiring to the apostles and it should be for us too. Now, what was the meaning and the lesson that we can learn from the transfiguration is where we're going to focus today. Now, the first thing, I like to read all nine verses. And I kind of uh, look at many different versions. And the, the new KJV is what I'm going to read from. Now it says here in verse, one, in verse 1, After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and his brother John, and he bring them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face shone as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. Verse 3, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Five. While he yet spake, Behold, a light, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice was heard, it said, And behold, a voice of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Six. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. Eight. Well, seven and eight had combined those two. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Nine. And as they came from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Now here we see a pattern and a parallel between the old covenant and the new. And the evidence that we see here is, for instance, when the eternal God of the Old Testament, who actually was the one who became Jesus Christ confirmed the old covenant with the ancient Israel. Moses was also chosen to be the prophet between God and the people. Exodus 33, 19, 34 through 37. That's a little homework there. Now Moses desired to see the glory of the Lord and he was granted the request by, allow, by God allowing him to see the back part of him in his glorified form. Brethren, we are told that Moses was the first human ever to see the glorified form of the Lord. And he was also established as a unique 
prophet of God. Now, when the eternal God was ready to establish the new covenant and the new covenant church, he also gave the same stamp of approval to the leading apostles, Peter, James, and John. And this is the reason why Jesus took them with him up into the mountain and was transfigured in a vision before them. Now, two things we can look at. Number one, what the disciples saw was a glimpse of Jesus' divine nature, a peak beyond his humanity, not through the radiance of his intensity and the white clothing, but through the appearance of what Moses and Elijah would look like in the glory of the resurrection when the kingdom of God arrives. Now, let's keep in mind that Elijah was the next greatest prophet of God after Moses. In 1 Kings 19, 13 and through, 19 through 13 and 15, Elijah was also spoken to by God on Mount Sinai and later was carried away through through to the sky in a flaming glorious chariot of God and he was placed in what this writer said he was placed in the retirement he did not come with us who knows now this even takes us on a powerful and dynamic meaning for the apostles it it had the apostles spellbound by seeing this situation take place because with this situation the children of Israel was going to be led by the Spirit of God from bondage in Egypt it was a tremendous event which always burned in their hearts and minds to inspire them it was a portrait of the hope and the glory of God. Now, after Peter's declaration of faith, and this may also be linked to Moses, who spent six days in the preparation before he was called to approach God in the cloud on the mountain of Sinai. The transfiguration also took place upon a mountain top, and it was a, a cloud overshadowed the place which symbolizes the presence of God. He was there. Reverend Moses and Elijah appeared and stand besides Jesus. And this symbolizes that Jesus is their successor and it has been fulfilled in Jesus. When God's voice is heard, he is assuring the disciples that even though Jesus must be crucified and persecuted, they must listen to him and they must obey him. Brethren, it's a wonderful thing to get a better understanding of the scriptures. In verse nine, Jesus again commands the disciples not to tell others of their experience. The time will come, but it will be later, after his death and resurrection. Brethren, the story of transfiguration directs us away from trying to understand Jesus only as he is revealed in glory, we have two points to look at. Point number one, it points us down the mountain and it invites us to walk with Jesus 
into the suffering, hungry crowd. And it points to the second point. The divine voice commands us not to talk, but listen to Jesus. Now, listening is more than hearing. And Jesus says in the Sermon of the Mount, it is it's also building on the rock, which meant not only hearing his words, but acting upon them. Brethren, we are not only to speak the word, we must act the word. We must not only be quick to speak, but we must also be listening and hearing what the still small voice is saying. Brethren, hearing without obeying the words of God leads to catastrophe. Remember in the Garden of Eden, God gave an edict to Adam and Eve. But who did they, li who did they listen to? They listened to that broad, braggadocious voice. If you take from these trees, you're going to get wise. You're going to get to know what God will want you to know. So who they listen to? <laughs> well, needless to say, today we are in certain situations because they didn't, they, they didn't speak too much. They listened, but they wrong to the wrong person. Brethren, in closing, at Gethsemane, when Jesus himself faces the temptation to disobey his father and abandon the road to the tree of the cross, the same three disciples who saw the transfiguration waited with him while he grieves and prayed. But notice, he passed the test. But they did not. When they saw he was arrested <laughs> and he was taken, they, they, they took off. <laughs> they tried to save themselves. Now, Jesus walks steadfastly onto the suffering death. And they could not stand the situation and they deserted him. They jump ship. Now on the cross, Jesus shows the world the obedient Son of God in all his suffering humanity, pouring out his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Brethren, let us look forward to that day, that day when we shall see Jesus return in the fullness and the power of his glory. Let us hear him say, you kept the faith, you stayed the course, and you finished the race. Come into my kingdom, my good and faithful servants. Brethren, it is a very great privilege that we have on this <coughs> this day of of this the day of transfiguration because there are many folks who are not privileged to understand this so we can tell someone that this Jesus that they're hearing is real and what he did for us he can surely do for them and let us go to the throne thankful Father, we thank you so much for opening our minds and keeping us teachable. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your Holy Spirit and your guide. We ask you, dear Lord, to bless each and every one of us, our brothers and sisters in Zoom land, or wherever they may be and they have in contact with you, bless them. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.